everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Courtney, and today we're gonna do a Biba look. Around. Biba was a fashion house, but created a whole look around them in their own sense of style. It's very different. At the time in the in England in the 60s, it was all about pale lips, very mod, a lot of eyeliner, lots of lashes. She did the polar opposite of that, she which she called anti-colors, like an ant, not anti-color. And the anti-colors were those like bruised plums and blues and just everything very different and uh, it is still known today as such a, a, a fashion staple in like makeup world. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I already did my skin because if you've seen my other videos, I've went through that and I basically did the same thing except for the contouring because it's not really a big contour look. Um, the blush is much higher, it's much rosier. They were, I'm just going to get into it. I'm going to start off with a bit of smolder eyeliner and I'm just going to apply that to a raw lid and prep it with anything. And I doesn't have to be perfect just kind of get that on because you're you're just gonna blend it out and you're gonna put other colors on top of it I'm not gonna recreate a Biba look I'm gonna do an inspired Biba look but for every day I want to go more with I guess the silhouette of the look rather than all of the colors but I still want to keep the textures. It's very luminous. So I'm just taking a fluffy brush and blending out that smolder liner. And I want to keep it darkest at the lash line and then just build it up so that it gives that transition. On top of that, same brush. I'm going in with Smut Eyeshadow from MAC just like as has a slight shimmer so it's easy to blend I find anything that has like a slight frost to it blends a lot easier for you than a matte color matte colors are better to build up with a, a fluffier brush until you get to the desired effect or opacity I just want to get as much product and opacity on the lid with that brush and it's not a perfect look, but I like more of an effortless, an effortless look. So, a bigger, fluffier brush, same color. I'm going to start building up the inner part, that inner corner. Because it's more of a rounded eye than an almond eye. And I go into the crease first and onto the lid and then with what's left on my brush I do small circles and that'll blend that out for you so you don't have a hard line. So the small circles blends everything out. And really bring that, you can almost you start right in that inner inner crease and then even if it looks like you're going into your eyebrow, it's just what's left in your brush, so it's fine. I don't know if that's even, but my face isn't even, so it doesn't really matter. So back to that smaller brush, smaller fluffier brush, back in with smut. I'm gonna bring that under my eye. I'm focusing it mainly on the inner corner here, not so much out here, because I don't want that really elongated look. I want to keep it more of that circle. It is a very luminous look, so I'm going to apply, this is the Roan palette. I saw this in a video and I love a good glitter texture. If it looks wet and not a bigger 
chunk of a glitter. I saw this used and I was like, oh, that is gorgeous. It was $42 <laughs> and they're little pans, but it's like $10 a shadow. So it makes sense to me. And you really get a lot out of it. You don't need a lot. So I'm okay with spending that. I'm gonna go in with this color here. Mm, very shiny. With my finger. And it's a cream texture. But I just wanna throw that on top of everything I did. Concentrating mainly on the lid, right in the center first, because that's where the light hits. And then with what's left on my finger, just kind of bring that on top of everything. So by adding that, you're adding in a different dimension of color. So as the light hits it, you'll see a very beautiful neutral rainbow. And it just lightens it up a little bit. And with the same color, I'm gonna go in and just press that onto the lower lash line. The okay, that just got all over. Mm. Eh, good enough. With the lighter color, just gonna press that under the brow. This will also help to blend out any hard lines. A little bit on that inner corner. There. I'm gonna go back in with the Smolder pencil, which is just to add a little bit more depth. And since it's creamy too, it just kind of coats the glitter so it keeps the texture, but it just adds that little bit of a shadow. Oh, that's cool. Hmm. I'll do a little bit on the outer corner too to keep that dreamy look, almost like the eyes tilted down a little bit, rounded and doe-eyed. Maybe I'm going to add a little bit of a lighter color on the inside, again, to oh, round out the eye. I'm just using a cream colored pencil. You can use any one that you like. This one is a Perry Berlin. So it just opens up the eye even more. I'm going to try out this new... MAC mascara that I stole from my mom. Ooh, it's got like a thicker, I always wanted to try one of these mascaras too. It doesn't seem to really have a wiper system in there either, so a lot comes out on the wand. But then it's a dual wand, so then you get a really small one to get into the bottom lashes. I haven't tried this yet, so this is gonna be the first time. Let's start with the lower lashes. That does dick. Oh, swing and a miss. Wow, there's like no product coming out of it. That does nothing. Maybe if I build it? Okay, let's try the other one. <laughs> That's the thicker end. Hmm. It's not, it is, I feel like this side is a little bit better. This is the bold and, bold and bad lash. I feel like it grabs the lashes a little bit better, but uh, not a lot of coating going on. I feel like I'm gonna have to 
build that up for a while. Not terrible, but let's give it a second to dry. If you wait a little bit in between applications, it helps to build that up. So let's go into the brows. Brows were kept very thin. I wish I bleached my brows. I usually bleach my brows to create a softer look. Um, if you guys are interested, I will show you how to do that. It's probably very dangerous and I wouldn't, I probably shouldn't show you. <laughs> so I have thin brows to begin with, so I'm not going to build them up like I usually do. I'm just going to follow it. I also have rounder brows, so it goes a little bit better with this look. I'm gonna cut it a little bit more because that's just gonna frame that circle, that circle look that we do with the eyeshadow. Oh, just burped. Mm -hmm. Still using that brow pencil. Makeup is expensive, but it really does last a long time. So if you find a brand that you really like and support and they're a little bit more expensive, ooh, that came out a lot better. I would, I would definitely do it, especially if you're using or doing the same look every day because then you don't have to think about anything and the products will just do it for you. And trust me, I'm pretty frugal, but I find with I get certain makeup, I'll I'll pay for it. Like that glitter eyeshadow from Roan, it's like R O E N is I wear it almost every day. It's beautiful. Mm -mm -mm. All right, let's go back with some more mascara and see what if that works. <laughs> it's interesting. It gives you a wispy lash. It doesn't build up the thickness. I also didn't research what the mascara is supposed to do, but if, if it has that big of a wand, you'd think, or I thought, that it would be a, a thicker, bolder lash. And isn't it called bold? So, definitely works better if you let the layers dry in between. Not terrible. And just use the, the bigger wand for the bottom lashes. Maybe you can use the smaller wand to, if it does start to clump, which it is kind of getting sticky. It is kind of sticking them together, so let's try that. Mm. And it's very dry. And she just got this. But it does give a pretty lash. That wasn't terrible. That wasn't it was two coats. growing on me. This is one of my favorite parts of the Biba look, is the placement of the blush. So I'm going to start off, I'm using a, a lipstick called Candy Yum Yum with my finger. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. But it's a higher placement a bit of a bolder color. So if you can imagine this next to those bruised plums and blue, no, bruised, yeah, and purples and coppers, it is a bold look, but very, very ethereal and beautiful.
that oh, I love this placement. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna go over. It's pretty bold in person, so also going with the textures. Instead of using a glitter, I'm gonna put a similar texture but more of a frost next to it. So it's interesting to look at. So just with a fluffy brush, this almost picks up nothing. I, I don't want it to cover the color. I want it to just add texture on top of it. So as the light catches it, you go from a glitter texture to a frost texture. So I'm not going to contour with this look, I'm just keeping the color and the blush there. Another big piece to this look is the lips. I'm going to be using chestnut, which is a dark brown, and then I'm going to go in with the Ariana Grande Viva Glam, uh, which is like a deep violet. So instead of making it go too purple by adding in a burgundy liner, I'm going to cut that and ground it with a dark brown liner. The shape is very important too. It was more bowed, so color mainly kept on the inner, no, <laughs> in the center of the lip. So creating that little Cupid's bow. So I'll overdraw that area a little bit, but then almost go inside my lip line with the outer corners. Same thing with the bottom. Maybe keep it a little overdrawn in the center. But then so that it like kind of in the outer corners. I don't know the words. Color it all in. I just do like a once over. If your lips are moisturized, that helps <laughs> a lot. So just use the side of the pencil. Just lightly feather that on. That'll give that first layer of color. Um, this is such a beautiful color, just that like deep burgundy. And it's a matte lip. I don't want a perfect rigid line. So if you just kind of pat your finger over it, it'll diffuse. So that's it. I'm gonna go get a turban. Oh, I'm just gonna make myself a turban. I have a long black scarf. Just wrap it around the base. And twist it. Tie it in the back. This is great if you have a huge forehead. And that's something that you can just add in to, to really bring in the whole look. 
It was also very Art Deco inspired, so I chose these earrings because they are Art Deco inspired. Um, but that's it. Okay, I'm gonna take off the turban and show you the full look that I'll probably be wearing today. I don't think I'm gonna wear this turban. I may, hold on. Actually quite like this look with the turban. I just have to do it a little bit nicer. But I have this blazer that I got off the Real Real from Rag and Bone. The Real Real, you can get things for like 90% off. So I think I got this blazer for 20 to $30. Second hand, so you're saving the earth. Um, this top is from Rouge, which is Jeanne Damas's line. My bra is from Agent Provocateur, which again I got a long time ago, but it was on sale. So Eileen Fisher, definitely recommend checking her stuff out. She's been sustainable from the get-go. And then these shoes, Minnie picked up for me at a thrift shop or vintage shop, and they were a dollar. I'm so excited. It's hard to find my shoe size because I had big feet in size 10. But if anybody knows of, well, whatever. So that is the final makeup look and what I'm going to wear today. I really do like this turban with this look. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like this look, please comment below. Let me know um, what are some of your favorite makeup styles from the past, um, even from today. And please like and subscribe. That would mean a lot to me. Um, yeah, and if you have any ideas about other videos or other content that you'd like to see, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.